welcome back to another episode of the Freedom Sisters podcast, y'all. Today, we're in for a special treat as we sit down with Deb and Juanita from the Pink Berets. All month long, the Pink Berets are sponsoring this podcast, and I cannot tell you how incredible this organization is enough. Seriously, if you are considering any kind of healing or reaching out or wanting to connect with our sisters, not only can you do that here with us at Freedom Sisters, but the pinkberets.org is your place to go to help you navigate through PTSD, MST, and combat stress related traumas that really are geared and directed for women who have served in the United States military. So if you have any unaddressed needs, reach out to them because they're really an incredible organization. Today, we're sitting down with Deb and Juanita. Now, Deb is a participant, and she recently attended their fishing retreat, and she talks all about how special that was, and I'm really excited for you guys to hear her story and all of the excitement she has since finding the Pink Berets. Now, Deb also has an organization in San Antonio, Women of Women Vets of San Antonio, so I highly encourage you to listen to this and tap into that resource as well. Now, Juanita is the chief operations officer, the Jill of all trades, and I loved her wisdom and her heart and her motivation behind why she works for the Pink Berets and all the incredible growth that she has seen, the transformation she has seen, and their future goals. So stay tuned for this episode of the Freedom Sisters podcast sponsored by the Pink Berets to find out more. Welcome, I'm Carrie Cheater, and this is the Freedom Sisters Podcast, a show where my sisters in service talk about her life journey, from hardships to victories and everything in between. We are the leading media company to amplify women veterans. Y'all know this month we are being sponsored by the incredible, the amazing, the Pink Berets. And each week we have been talking with some incredible women who have utilized the organization and their outreach events or their therapy opportunities. And we have also been hearing from women who are a part of the organization making those things happen. So today we continue this conversation with Juanita Sepulveda, and I'm so excited that you're here and I want you to eloquently say your name because I know I, I didn't say it perfectly beautifully the way that you do, but I'm really excited to sit down with you. So welcome to the show. You know, you said it perfectly, but just to satisfy you, my name is Juanita Sepulveda and I am a United States Marine veteran. Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's amazing. So can you tell us, introduce yourself. So obviously you're a Marine, you're a veteran. That's really incredible, which makes three of you from the organization that I spoke with who are inside the organization that are veterans. Dr. Abney is not, but what she said was so cute. She was uh, a veteran by osmosis because she's really carrying all of our stories. And that was a really great conversation as well. But Tell us what you do for the Pink Berets and how you got involved. Well, you know, I am Chief Operating Officer and basically I am Jill of all trades. How I got involved, I was originally associated with another organization here in San Antonio, Texas. And I was introduced to the Pink Berets by a, another veteran who was with the USO. And she calls me up. She goes, hey, they're having this fashion show. You want to go to it? I said, you know who does not want the opportunity to get all glammed up and bling bling and just walk that strut, right? So we went and they were having a fashion show and that is how I was introduced to the Pink Berets from Foxhole to the runway. And that was, <laughs> that was the beginning and I've never left since. 2018 of memory service, you correct? Oh, that's awesome. So what did you do in the Marine Corps, if you don't mind me asking, and how long did you serve? Well, I started off as an admin and then I went to the warehouse. I became a warehouse chief and then I came back to admin chief and then I ended up becoming logistics chief as an E4. And uh, I was in the Marine Corps for a little bit over eight years, eight years plus. And, you know, you talk about adventures. They really were. They were great adventures. They were great learning opportunities. And I think I, don't, I haven't come across another veteran who hasn't said they wouldn't do it all over again. So I'm going to have to mimic that statement. It was a great time for me. Yeah. 
which right. isn't the case for everyone, which is why the Pink Berets established their organization, right? They really wanted to reach women who served that, that did have these um, hardships that they experienced, whether it be post-traumatic stress, military sexual trauma, combat trauma stress. And I think it's really something, I can attest to this being a woman veteran. I served for 12 years in the army and had deployments and natural disasters because I was guard that we responded to as well in state of emergency duties. And there was a lot of stuff that I didn't realize I was carrying with me with the experiences that I was having. But although I did, I had a great experience. I did not suffer from at the hands of cruelty of other people. It was just the environments that I was placed in based on what my job was and my rank too, that sometimes played a role in the level of information you got or how much you were involved as well. So I think it's really cool that there's organizations who are specifically for women because there's just something about sitting down with a sister. I mean, it's just an automatically knowing that you guys have experienced, you gals have experienced something that's relatable. How do you feel about that with the pink berets and standing up for, for women? Well, you know, so let's backtrack a little bit. My experience sure. was amazing, but like everyone, it wasn't perfect. Many of us aren't able to articulate what happened to us, right? Nor do we want to, because we don't want to just dwell in that. We don't want to dwell in that gray. So how do I feel about what we're doing? You know, when we talk about supporting each other, we talk about creating a new platform that you can, you can land on. You know, we're phenomenal at creating soldiers, Marines, airmen, you know, we're phenomenal at creating a beautiful fighting machine, right? But we haven't learned quite to become proficient on transitioning back to civilian life. And organizations like the Pink Berets, it's not an answer to everything. It just gives you a landing site that you're able to start rebuilding, creating your new normal. Mm -hmm. You know, PTSD has been stereotyped as something negative. But PTSD doesn't necessarily have to live in that arena. You know, it is up to organizations like the Pink Berets and other organizations that we collaborate is to change that image. Mm -hmm. PTSD does not identify us as the person that we are. It is just a crisis that we experienced and we all manage it in different manners. We all have different resources that we need and maybe not be aware at the moment that we need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the author of this particular book, but she wrote Lean In. She was with Facebook. I can't, I'm not doing her a service, but she had said something because she had lost her husband and she had wrote a book about the grief cycle and finding him and the post-traumatic stress she was experiencing, but she made a choice to not stay stuck in that, but what she and I don't know if she's claimed this is like her token word or if it's clinically there, but post-traumatic growth. And I love that idea of it because, you know, there are a lot of beautiful things that rise from the ashes. I mean, even when there's a forest fire and it tarnishes the earth, the greenery that comes after that fire is something that doesn't happen unless there was a fire. And so, although there are some murky and, and, hard things that we've experienced, it doesn't mean that you can't find beauty after the trauma. And one particular program you guys offer is this visual art. And I have seen some of these women's artwork from that. And, you know, I think it's really incredible how they are transforming their emotions, what they're feeling and putting it on the canvas and creating something that's beautiful inside of them you know, and it's manifesting to the world to see that beauty that's within them. And then the other one is the photography class. I talked with Amber a little bit about that. And it's really capturing that emotion. And how she said it was like capturing the emotion and then putting it out there and letting it go and then moving on into the next, like next thing for your day or whatever. So what program do you love so much at the Pink Berets that you want to talk about today? So first, let me, let me touch on the book that you were talking about. The book is called Lean In by Cheryl Sandberg. 
Yes, yes, that's right. it. And basically what it, one of the things about, and the reason I want to make sure that we, we address this one is because finding that balance, like, like we stated earlier, it's women work and the will to lead, right? In the military, we were all leaders in some form or fashion. So that's a great book to read. It has multiple areas that all you can identify, identify with, and you'll be able to pull some strength and some expi inspiring words. And you're right, not PTSD, PTSG. Mm -hmm. So I love it. Wow, my favorite program. I'm telling you, I, if I could be bougie, it would be <laughs> a culinary program because who does not enjoy a delicious meal with that fantastic aroma, right? But mm -hmm. see, culinary kind of gets shortchanged a little bit because all you're focusing is on the aroma and the taste, but the process. The process is you know, being able to one, to reacclimate to following instructions, but then you have to think about collaboration and then you have to think about other people's opinions. And then you have to think about the preparations. Remember logistics, all the work beforehand to get to that point. As a matter of fact, this past weekend, we just, we had an event with another collaborative partner that we, you know, in spite of COVID, and all the variants that we're dealing with, we were still able to have 50% participation. And I love it because, yes, who doesn't like to enjoy their, you know, their product at the end and have some finger licking good, delicious food. But then you sit down with the partner or your, your significant other, your loved ones, and you take a look at what you produced. It's a unified moment that you're sharing. It's a memory that you'll have forever. We have one, you know, culinary event that we have with mommy and me, mm -hmm. where we have the veteran with their daughters. And then we have Valentine's where it's the veteran with their spouse, right? And we're getting ready to do, you know, grill on the go because stereotypically, you know, men are the grillers. But let me yeah. tell you, give me a moment and I will grill up some delicious fish that will knock your socks off. <laughs> but when we talk about the culinary program, we're talking about communicating. And when we transition out of the military, you know, we're removed from an environment that we're so used to communicating and over communicating because a lot of our decisions are life and death. But to slow down the pace, to focus, to come up with a product, that you're not literally going to lose your life over, but that you can focus on that moment and really savor it, not just the aromas and the taste, but savor the completion of that one dish to see this beautiful product that you created and nobody ordered you to do it. You did it willingly. That's transitioning. That is finding your new normal, slowing down the pace to enjoy it. So culinary, that's my favorite. Oh my gosh, there's so much that's going through my mind as you're talking. So first thing that I wanted to address. So before I deployed, I took the kids on a cruise and they loved the, and I was a single mama at this time, and they loved the sitting down and getting their little polos on and having that fancy meal, right? And so when I came home from deployment, I was like, what are we going to do as a family? What do you guys want to do to like re-engage and do something special that mom's home, we're all back together and whatever. And unanimously, they were 11, if I can remember, my gosh, it's been nine years. So he, he'll be 22. So whatever. Oh. So 14, 11, and nine, eight, when I came. And unanimously, they were like, let's go to a fancy dinner. Let's just sit and enjoy and drink out of the goblets and the wine. You know, they're like so fancy with their cups. But there is something so normalizing about the high up tempo that I just left and wasn't quite like it was kind of sensory overload right. coming back to the States too, because, you know, everything's brown in the desert and you're very limited. And so there's all this commotion, all these choices, but we were able to just to sit in this restaurant, this really fancy restaurant in Baltimore, little Italy, and 
really just enjoy each other for that moment. So I can attest to how like just slowing down and embracing and savoring those precious memories. And that's something I'll never forget my whole life of what they wanted and how it was this connection together. So I can totally see that also happening out of the transition back to your new normal of being out of the military as well. And then you had said the mommy and me thing. I love that so, so much. I think that is really a cute thing because, you know, little girls are watching as, as a mom, you're, you're one of the first leaders that your children will know. And so they're going to emulate you. They're going to pick up what you're, what you're doing and to show them a healthy process. You know, we're not perfect, but to show them like a healthy process is also really impactful. So you're not only saving lives of the actual veteran and helping them navigate this unknown territory, but you're also helping their families. I think that's really incredible work. Well, the other thing too is being able to work with the Pink Berets reminds the kids that don't be so completely focused inward, right? Yes, you have to take care of yourself to be able to pour into someone else. That's why it's so important doing the self-care. But the one of the things that I'm able to take away from the Pink Berets is that I, I'm able to remind my children servant leadership. And servant leadership doesn't have to come in something massive, you know, bells and whistles, glitters and bows and everything. It could be something as simple as taking a slice of pizza or ha cutting a burger in half and sharing it with your person next to you, right? It can be something as simple as taking a, a glass of water to someone and, who's thirsty, right? And I think that's one of the things that I love about what we do is the fact that it's those, well, we all, we've all heard, you know, you start with a grain of sand. A grain of sand can do one or two things. It can either irritate you or build these great mountains, right? Well, mm -hmm. I kind of like to think that I'm both. I want to irritate you enough to take a look and self-evaluate and say, okay, I need to change. But I also like the fact that I'm that one grain that you can build off of and just keep building and pouring into and eventually create this huge mound of support that sometimes you didn't feel like you had, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and with the culinary program, you know, I was able to come home, like my, every time I go, my kids have me on Life 360. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and they'll send me a message are you bringing something home? Nice. Did you make something new? Because they get to taste it, they get to experience it too. And one of our favorite events that we did, we did, you know, macaroni and cheese from scratch. Mm, yum. Mm, yum. Yes. It was <laughs> a Southern classic. <laughs> right? And so when I came home, you know, I only had a small portion. So I went out with the recipe because we create the recipes on cards and we laminate them and we give them to the participant. So I was able to keep one. I came home and the girls and I made this mac and cheese with Gouda cheese because that's my favorite cheese, right? With mm -hmm. Gouda cheese. And even my son says, what is that smell? I said, that's mac and cheese from scratch. <sighs> yes, we're making it. <laughs> and so... It kind of puts you back at the ground floor psychologically and that reintegration with your family mm -hmm. because who does not enjoy a good meal with your kids? It's like baking those cookies and you put salt instead of sugar. You go, oh, I can't believe I did that. But then you get to start all over and say, you know what? That's okay. Let's start from scratch. Mm -hmm. That's a learning opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. Give those it, to the horses. They'll yeah. like them. <laughs> yeah. And then we do it all over the second time. And really the lesson in that is that if you don't succeed the first time, try again. Mm -hmm. Don't just stop because you didn't do it right the first time. There's always going to be somebody there to help you correct it. And that's really what we're trying to do with the pink berets. If you get the recipe wrong the first time, no big deal. We may not be that chef to get you get it right the second time, but we have great community partners that'll lend a helping hand. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So as the chief operating, the operations chief, we'll go we'll go the marine lingo here for the pink berets. How difficult is it? Because you guys offer a cornucopia of opportunities and events. So 
they none of them appear to be cookie cutter, but are there some similarities in the process? How do you manage all of that? And how excited are you when there's something new coming out because it's another new offering that you get to help lead the way on? You know, I wish I could take credit for everything, but the reality is we have a great team. Being operations is just a glorified title. I'm a chief operations of picking up trash. I'm the chief operations of wiping mm -hmm. down tables. I'm the chief operations for wiping kids, you know, noses, whatever it is that needs to be done, we're going to do it. When I say I'm a Jill of all trades, everyone has strengths on the team. How do I feel about it? Who doesn't want to brag on something successful, right? But the reality is we've had some setbacks because we didn't get it you know, right the first time. But we come back again and we take criticism well and then we improve it. And you're right. The programs that we have are not cookie cut, right? They're tailored to the need of the individual. And here's the one thing I want to make sure that your listeners know. At the Pink Berets, we want to fit your needs. We don't want you to feel like you have to be fit into our program. That's not how it should be because every person is unique and every pro program has to have something that fits that, that gap that you're missing. Because think of it, when we leave the military, we're Swiss cheese. We got a lot of holes to fill. <laughs> But when you start layering us, right, eventually we get them all covered. But every layer is different and mm -hmm. it's different for everybody. So being operations, you really have to, I'm going to coin that phrase, we adapt and overcome. We sometimes go on the fly. We've got a beautiful plan that we're ready to execute, but Murphy's always going to stick his nose in it, right? Yep. And the mm -hmm. reality is, Sometimes we do hit the mark, miss the mark, right? And sometimes we hit it dead on. But we're such a program that it's okay. It's okay yeah. because when people tell us what we do wrong, it's a learning opportunity. And we want those learning opportunities because we don't want to miss it at that moment, at that peak moment where you really need us. And we don't want to be prideful to say that, you know, we get it right all the time. We don't. But here's the one thing that we do get right. We do extend a handout to someone else that may be the subject matter expert that does it better. We definitely know to know how to identify that. Oh, that's good. That's awesome. So since you've been there for almost three years or a little over three years, what have you seen in that organization for growth and transformation, whether it's the organization itself or the women who are participants? And then where would you like to see the Pink Berets go in the future? I'm going to leave that for the future at the end. Okay. So from the beginning, you know, our three signature programs are the culinary, the groups, and then the equine program. Those are our signature programs. Those three will never go away. I can tell you without hesitation, they will never go away. But we've added yoga, self-defense, concealing carries, photography, art, we do, we have mentorship programs. We have in 2022, we have five retreats scheduled, two of them for adaptive. And the reason nice. we're, we're identifying those is because we want to make you strong. We want to give you the tools to see yourself with that strength. But sometimes you do need that adaptive little support to get there, right? So the changes I've seen First of all, the changes that I've seen is in the team itself. Every organization, you know, all goes through some type of learning curve, right? Mm -hmm. The one thing with the leadership is we've learned to have those authentic conversations with each other and not be catty about it. Because if we're catty, and I'm going to stress this because your audience need to understand this for all those who are even in their own organizations. If you not, if you cannot step outside yourself because of the clients that you're serving, you could be causing more harm than good. Oh, amen, sister. Like we could marinate on that all day. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you become too prideful and take too much ownership that this is just mine, you have stopped growing and you have stopped serving and you have stopped aligning with your mission. Right. 
Hmm. So that was the one thing that we started really working on, making sure that it doesn't seep in and overtake us. Not I'm saying that it happens to a lot of organizations, but we're human. Mm-hmm. We're human and, and we come with baggage. We're not perfect. Now, here's my favorite part. Where do I want to see the pink berets? Well, Stephanie, and I talked about this about two years ago, a little bit after I came on board in 2019. So I'm going to give you a little bit of statistics first. In the state of Texas, nationwide, there's a 6% awareness of women veterans that are homeless. In this, I mean, that's nationwide. I apologize. 6% Mm -hmm. nationwide. In the state of Texas, it's 14% of women veterans that are homeless. But there's no statistics on women veterans that are homeless with children. Mm Mm-hmm. And I, I can, am- yeah, just to collaborate with you on that statistic, the women I have worked with who have been homeless, 70% of them have had children. So keep going. Right. So, and there's, there's no real solid data capturing that need. Now you're talking about the women who served selflessly to defend this country, right? And some of them still don't identify as veterans. And so we're still trying to make sure that we get that conversation initiated, identified, and supported. So where do we want to be? In 2019, you know, we came up with the conversation of creating a facility for women veterans here in San Antonio that houses not just single women veterans, but single women veterans with children. That's our goal within the next year. And we're already putting that action into play. So that's my wish list. That's Stephanie's wish list. And that's really what we want to do. Talk about creating a new foundation to build on those. That's our vision. Oh, I love it. In the next year to initiate it in the next five years to bring it to fruition. That's where we hope that the pink rays will be. Mm, I love that so much. I don't know if you can see this little sash back here, but Miss Better in America 2015, I was honored to carry that torch and wear the crown and this title for a year to help amplify homeless female veterans. And it's still a very deep, deep care and concern of mine because it absolutely just makes no sense to me. And I don't think women need to not have children and serve. I think that is so archaic. And I, you know, I joined the army as a single mom with three kids during the 2013 recession and the government shut down. We were affected greatly by that. I shouldn't be more penalized because I'm a woman with children because of such things. And so I really am so excited to see you, this organization, stepping into that arena because you guys are doing so many other things so well. Your care, your compassion, your outward focus is just, it's relevant and it's apparent in everything that y'all are touching and doing. If somebody is wanting to learn more about the Pink Berets or how to reach out to you or how to find out more about the organization, where, where can they go? Well, one thing that we ask is that you go to inquiries at the pinkberets.org. And the reason we do that is because data drives everything right? But you can reach out to me. I'm Juanita Sepulveda. You can reach me at Juanita at the pinkberets.org. We're always looking for support. We're always looking for volunteers. You know, support, everybody instantly thinks it's money. Now, could we use the kind of jingles? Absolutely. But you support us, but I so the one thing I want to, I do want to stress, and, and I think this is extremely important, is for those of you who are serving the veteran community, the military community. The one thing I want to stress to you is don't forget that you need a soundboard. Don't forget that you also need to go out and get the help for yourself because sometimes you get affected and you don't realize that you're being affected. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll, I'll testify. The reason homeless veterans are so important to me is that in 2011, I was homeless with our kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, One of the recommendations was, we'll help you, but you've got to give up your kids. Right. That's exactly was one of my like biggest 
concerns was like you the, as a mom you're a rock car in a hard place because do you go yeah. get the help and then what do you do with your kids and like shelters for instance if the boy is over 12 years old and you have a son they can't yeah. go into the shelter with you they have to go to the men's shelter as a 12 year old i don't think so like this is so archaic and even the va classifies a veteran with dependents as a single veteran yes they're their own dependent and so they're also getting those stipends that should be going to families they're going to single individuals so i mean there it's just it's such a crazy system that's not working so, so i highly encourage that you know you voice out what you have to say you want to be associated with this you want us in your areas you know reach out to us you know inquiries at the pinkberets.org myself is juanita at the pinkberets.org. We have the opportunity to collaborate, not just here in San Antonio, Texas, but nationwide. We get calls from Colorado, from Florida, New York, California. You know, when are we gonna be in, you know, in their state? The need is great and we're coming, we're coming. We just have to build a good foundation so that when you reach out to us, we don't fail you. And if we don't have the resources, we make sure we have a good partner, uh, a community partner that's going to support you because we don't want to make empty promises. That's the last thing we want to do, especially in your moment of need. So, you know, we're here to support, we'll hear you. And if we don't have something, we will reach out to one of our community partners. Yeah. I don't know if you could see, but like something you just said, just brought like tears to my eyes because I, one, I hate vulnerability, but as a leader, what I'm hearing, cause like, that's one of my spiritual giftings. It's something I do here for Freedom Sisters, for Never Alone Advocacy, a few other organizations, Combat Sexual Assault that I help with. Um, it's really that authentic leader, like coming from a place of knowing that you have the skills and you are equipped to do so, but wanting to do it for the people who you want to support and encourage and lead well. So I, as a leader, when I'm hearing you say, is like, look, we want to have a solid foundation. We don't want to fail you. Like that is what leadership looks like. Um, and I just appreciate that so much. So like, oh, that just gave me all the feels because... <laughs> I know sending people to the pink berets, they're going to be cared for because the leaders have their best interests at heart. So thank you. Oh my goodness. So much for your incredible conversation today. I love that you are a connoisseur of cheese. I mean, you talked about mac and cheese, Gouda cheese, and, um, yeah. oh my gosh, there was a third cheese you had mentioned that I forgot. Oh, Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese. And, yeah. but a Jill of all trades and just a heart like bigger than the continent itself because you're just doing the thing and appreciate you so much and your time today. It's just been a beautiful conversation. So Juanita, I will be lifting all of you up in prayer for sure, but thank you so much for what you're doing and you're, you're on that prayer list now, sister. And I'm just so grateful for you. Well, Semper Fi to all those Marines and don't forget to stay tuned in because the more we can get this information out, the better we can unite and become stronger. That's right. The Pink Berets is sponsoring the Freedom Sisters podcast all month long. Now, the Pink Berets offer all of their services at no cost to you. They offer many types of therapeutic techniques to help you process and come to terms with your experience, gain mastery over your reactions, and reestablish a sense of hope. Whether you have experienced post-traumatic stress, military sexual trauma, or combat trauma stress, the Pink Berets is committed to you. By offering you individual, group, or family therapy, culinary art classes, photography class, visual art class, equine therapy, women on the water, and many, many more special events and opportunities for you to regain that sense of hope and build community with your sisters in arms. Go over to www.thepinkberets.org today and find out which service is right for you. All right, so we're going to continue this conversation with Deb Parsons, and I'm really excited to talk with you and to know more about what you're doing in the space and helping um, your organization succeed as well. So if you could do us a favor and just introduce who you are to our listeners. Sure. My name is Deb Parsons, and 
I am actually the president of the Women Veterans of San Antonio. I'm a retired Air Force vet. I did 25 and a half years and chose to retire in San Antonio because it's just a great military city. Oh, yeah. San Antonio has the Riverwalk, right? Is it does. Yeah. It has a lot more than just the Riverwalk, though. The Alamo. I'm trying to think. I've been there a couple of times. And the kids, my kids, we went there for like an all-star NBA all-star weekend. And so we did like the Rainforest Cafe and we did the Riverwalk. And then on the way back to Missouri, because that's where I was stationed, we we did Great Wolf Lodge. So it was a fun, it was a fun time down in San Antonio. Great. For well, sure. I'm actually from Missouri too. <laughs> Are you from Missouri? I'm from oh, St. Louis. Nice. nice. I just was stationed. I was part of the Missouri Army National Guard. It's actually how I began my service and was there for nine years. So interesting, interesting path of how I landed my job and my service and all of that. So what led you to join the Air Force? It's kind of funny. When I was in junior high, I saw a magazine in home ec of a woman in uniform. And I was a little bit of a tomboy. And I saw that and I said, you know, I think I want to do that. And I knew my grandfather had been a Marine. Um, my other grandfather had been in the Navy and the Army. So aside from them, there wasn't a big military presence in my family. So come senior year, when I broke the news that, hey, I'm joining the military, there was there was a lot of shock and concern. <laughs> That's awesome, though. I love how you were in home ec. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so great. I mean, you never know. You never know mm -hmm. how you're going to learn about service and whatnot. What did you do in the Air Force and how long did you serve? So I served for 25 years, seven months, and I think like 20 something days. And I was in the services career field, which is a combination of food service, recreation, lodging, fitness, mortuary. It's a, it's a very, very diverse career field. So yeah. I spent most of my time there. And then I was also an instructor here in San Antonio. I was a first sergeant and then went on to be a squadron superintendent. Cool. Yeah, I always thought it was interesting the how the Air Force did that because you you didn't really know where you were going to be assigned, but customer service and really just providing that was really a neat way because I had one person at the gym, at the Air Force gym that I worked at because one of the Army units I worked at was on Whiteman Air Force Base. And she was like, yeah, next next tour I'm going into the kitchen or whatever. And she was like at the front desk at the... um gym. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You never very, know very, get. very diverse. <laughs> which is, which is nice because it probably relates if you want to go into the hospitality after mm -hmm. service, like you could really pretty much do any of that. Um, yeah, very, very well, marketable skills. Yeah. So how did you hear about the Pink Berets and what's your connection with them? I think through my organization, through the Women Veterans of San Antonio, before I was the president, I think I saw them on our page and checked them out. And then when I took over as president, I got to meet with Stephanie and we started planning events that we could do together to partner, to bring women veterans together. And so I've, I've done their yoga, which is super nice. I just came back from the retreat they had this weekend. So we were fishing, which was amazing. Yeah, I saw, I, I saw, and I followed and I liked, and I shared a bunch of stuff on, on Instagram this weekend from that. It looked amazing. It was. Um, so what does the Women Veterans of San Antonio do, and what does that partnership look like between you and the Pink Berets? Sure. So our organization doesn't provide, say, the mental health resources that the Pink Berets do, but what we do provide is a way for women veterans to get together. When you leave the service, you, you kind of lose that sense of community. And when we all get together, we all have that shared community, the shared experience. You can meet somebody for the first time, and you just immediately click. So we do a lot of events. We do a lot of volunteering. We support uh, homeless women veterans in San Antonio. We do have the most homeless women veterans in the state of Texas. We also do social activities and get folks out doing wine tastings. We did stand-up paddle boarding recently. We've done skydiving. So we just do just a mix of fun activities. That's awesome. And do you charge for those activities or do you get sponsored in grants for people to come do them for... So generally we charge, but I looking forward, I'm definitely looking at getting sponsorships and grants. Nice. Awesome. And so with this partnership with the Pink Berets, what is it that you have just loved so much about what they're doing for our sisters? They're, oh my gosh, where to begin? They're amazing. 
They just provide a safe space, which we had over the weekend, where if you wanted to talk about what was on your mind, what you've been through, you could. You didn't have to. But we all knew that that we just had that combined experience. Um, Stephanie and her team are just so passionate about what they do, and they take it very seriously. And it's important. There's just not a lot of resources for women veterans specifically. And they provide just a great outlet for that between counseling and activities and retreats. They just do so much for our community. Yeah, they sure do. Now, a lot of women that go, it's for, they're seeking those services to help the healing journey. But is that all it is about? Or is it just like, because some women's experiences, they don't have that experience. And so maybe they feel like maybe they can't reach out to the Pink Berets and enjoy getting together and doing yoga. It's just going to be heavy. Do you feel like the events are heavy or do you feel like it's more of just like this warm gathering, this cool energy of women when you guys get together? I haven't found any of the events so far to be heavy. I just felt very welcome, very comfortable. They provide that just comfortable space. A lot of laughter. I mean, laughter is super important just for healing, for survival. And there's so much of that. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, because as I was thinking, you know, just even like for me, I'm like, oh, I want to try their like online, their virtual painting. That seems so cool because I'm not in Texas. So if I was in Texas, I would be all over showing up. But they do some really cool virtual events as well. Have you done any of their virtual activities? Yes, I did their virtual yoga, and it was just a very relaxed, low-pressure, low-impact yoga, just very comforting. And coming up, I'm actually doing an in-person photography class with them. Just getting, you know, the creativity going. You can find so many outlets just to help you get through the day, and, and I've yeah. seen that. So talk about this fishing re retreat that they just hosted as a participant. Like, what were your expectations going in, and then... What were your surprises once you got there? I don't know if I had any expectations, more excitement, but I just found everybody just to be so kind, so just real. It was, everybody was just so down to earth. I don't know if they were surprises. It was just an amazing time. I mean, I firmly believe you get out on the water and that's so therapeutic. And even before we were fishing, just being on the boat, cruising out to the site, you just, you just feel like the stress just fall off of you. It just feels really good. And then, you know, fishing is just always a fun activity. <laughs> yeah, I love to fish. Um, how many women were there this weekend? I think 12, maybe. Plus oh, you had cool. the staff. So yeah. we had three boats of women that went out fishing. So was it just one little fishing trip or did you guys go out a couple of times? And then what fish were you trying to catch? So it was one trip, but it was most of the day. So we met for breakfast at six in the morning and then jumped on the boats and we all came back between one and two. I know I caught some red fish, some red drums. There were also trout out there. Of course, you had to catch one that was the right size to be able to keep it. Yeah. Uh, but there was so much else, so much more out there, you know, that maybe we weren't fishing for, but we saw stingrays. We saw an amazing buck that was standing on the edge just watching us at tons of ladyfish jumping out of the water. It just started pouring on us and it actually felt really good. And fish just started just jumping left and right. It was, it was incredible. It was so fun. Oh, that sounds awesome. I, what I thought was really a sweet surprise for the attendees. I don't know if you guys were expecting like the grab bags or the bread. Can you talk about that? Like it wow. looks so incredible. It was incredible. The sponsors were so generous. In fact, I have one of the items here. I'm already drinking out of my Whataburger cup. I, Whataburger, ain't that, you don't have Whataburger, I'm just saying. <laughs> right. Whataburger is the best. We had butter, Whataburger, Grunt Style, Baffin Bay. I mean, they doted, donated the whole weekend to include gourmet food and then shirts at the very end. So, I mean, they were incredibly generous. We got cosmetics from L'Oreal and from Thrive Cosmetics and just a whole bag of amazing things. It just, it made us feel just special. Yeah. Yeah. As, as you are, as you are, I think that's really incredible. I, what, so with your organization and the Pink Braze, what do you want to do together in the future? That's just, you're so excited about, and maybe you can help us just know a little bit more about what your future looks like. Sure. Um, so right now we're planning an event in the fall, a paint and sip at a woman veteran owned winery that's about 
I don't know, 20, 30 minutes north of San Antonio. It's amazing. So we're planning on not just our organizations, but, you know, opening it to any woman veteran who wants to come out and enjoy the amazing wine, the painting, the camaraderie, the fellowship. That's so awesome. That's, that's coming up. That. So if they wanted to register for that, where can somebody go to find out about that opportunity? So we put it on our meetup page, but we also put it on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all of our events go out there for folks to see. So what's, where can we find you at on Facebook? Women Vets of San Antonio. That's awesome. If you were to encourage somebody to seek services with the Pink Berets, what advice would you give them as they're contemplating, is the Pink Berets right for me? You know, just check them out. And there's, there's so many great organizations that help out there. So there's going to be different ones that are different fits. But you're not going to know the amazing ladies, how you might feel after going through the services or just even socializing. You're not going to know until you take that first step. That's awesome. I just love, I, we, so we talked to Stephanie last month for our magazine and this month on the podcast is all month long, all about the pink berets. And so from your, from your fishing experience to the online yoga, what, what has been your favorite experience? Honestly, just meeting the other ladies. We all volunteered together with the Minority Veterans of America recently, getting food out and just getting a chance to, to meet and talk to everybody and see how hardworking they are. And their energy is just contagious. So yeah. for me, just the best part has been spending time with them. Man, and what another great organization, the Minority Vets of America yes. are as well. I mean, I applaud them almost daily for their just amazing work that they're doing in the space of like lobbying and moving things through Congress, but also just showing up at these food drops have been really fun to watch. Their communications director is a lot of fun. And Lindsay Church is the my conduit to that organization. She's just a rock star. I just think it's a, an amazing organization as well. But you know, the work that you do for homeless female veterans, how do they come to you for the services? Or are you supporting other organizations that they're being housed in? Or how how could somebody who's potentially struggling with homelessness in your area, how can they reach out to you? Or what services do you provide that are helpful to them? Sure. So what we provide is hygiene products. It obviously sucks to be a woman and to be homeless. And then you throw in the hygiene needs that we have. And, you know, if you're stuck where maybe you can't afford these products, you know, that's just unconscionable. So we build backpacks with filled with donations. Matter of fact, we're doing two different drives right now for donations. And we give them out to other organizations like say Haven for Hope that might house the women veterans so that they have supplies that they need. But we also do it at veteran events. So in November, the GI Forum has a huge event called the Veteran Stand Down and they support homeless veterans. And we have a whole section that's just for the women veterans where we can get them undergarments and hygiene supplies. And this year we're working to get some folks to cut their hair. You know, all these homeless events, they're great. They always have a hair cutter for the guys. You know, there's nothing like a haircut for a woman just to make you feel human, to make you feel normal. So we're working to get all that together as well as just collecting supplies from individuals and groups that bring them to us and just getting them out there. Um, you know, on occasions, folks have contacted me looking for resources. And while we can't say give money for a bill, I know a lot of organizations that do. And so we've built a really great coalition here in San Antonio. And so I can refer them out to other organizations that maybe can help financially, help with a place to stay and just with whatever their needs may be. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, thank you for taking on that undertaking as well, because it really does matter. There's a, a short film, I think it's called Blood and Glory, and it's about, oh my gosh, it's such a beautiful eight minute, it's only an eight minute long short film, and it's been, it gets shared in different places for publicity, I guess, but not, it's like you can't just go out and buy it or just watch it on YouTube, but it's directed by a female veteran, and it's about a homeless woman vet when she menstruates and how like stressful and how she's even like um 
it comes into question even like, is she going to like have to steal product to, I guess against her ethics, but she's like, what am I supposed to do in this situation kind of thing? So really powerful film about that as well, because it's just a reality of being a woman. And, you know, when you're in the uncomfortable situation of not having those supplies. So thank you for um, providing that. Um, as well I'm as have to check that out. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you the link. It's really, it's really cool. Maybe I'll even share it in the show notes because, um, Saki is the female veteran director and she, it just was such a well, well done. It's been, it's been in the circuit of film festivals and won a lot of rewards as well. So she really had a powerful message in that film. So I'll, I'll get you the link for sure. So, yeah, I think this is really awesome. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you have a captive audience? We're talking about the Pink Berets. We're talking about women veterans that you just want to tell a woman that's listening to this as she's listening. Sure. Listen, if you're a woman veteran, you're not alone. And I'll be the first to say when I first retired two years ago, I was completely lost. I didn't have that structure. I didn't have the camaraderie. I didn't have just what I was used to, you know, to go from high school to the military and then you're just out there. So seek out, even if it's not the Pink Berets or it's not the Women Veterans of San Antonio, you can seek out organizations that will bring some of those feelings back, the teamwork, the friendship. It's it's better than sitting at home and, and just, you know, when I first retired, I was sleeping till 12 every day. I just had no direction and you kind of have to have some kind of direction. So there's so many resources out there. Take advantage of them. You're not alone. That's awesome. I thank you so much for saying that. A lot of us do. I felt like I went through an identity crisis of like, who am I? Where am I? What's life all about when I left the military? And it's nice to come back into a circle of sisterhood that is really collaborative in finding those women who are supporting one another. And you're no longer the only one in the room because sometimes, you know, we have that experience in the military where it's the very far and few between. And now there's just this beautiful uprising of the veteran community and women just showing up and uh, stepping into these amazing roles to invite somebody else into the circle and let them know that they're not alone. So I think that's and, really and also to remind folks that women are veterans too. And there's a lot of people out there that to include women veterans themselves that don't don't see it. You know, you have women veterans that have been told their whole career, well, you didn't go downrange or you didn't do X, Y, Z, so you're not a veteran. Well, nobody says that to the males. Nobody yeah. goes, oh, well, dude, during your four years, you didn't deploy, so you're not a veteran. Nobody says that. So it's it's changing people's minds. You know, my husband and I are both veterans, but we go anywhere and people assume he's the veteran. And luckily he's gotten really good at saying, listen, my wife outranked me, served longer than me. Once he started realizing, no, seriously, this is a thing. Yeah, it really is a yeah. thing. And it's, yeah, it's unfortunate. My husband's gotten good at that too. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of mind blowing, but like, even, even if you think about when they lifted the final ban, like the last restriction on women's service. I mean, that was so many years later, but it's just really was, it's almost like society is just not ready to think that moms serve or moms can be in the military or women can sacrifice their life or stand for justice or freedom the way a man can. And it's just really mind boggling when we've been there all along, like Absolutely. all along. So. Yeah, you definitely serve. Like you sign the blank line, you sign the dotted line, sign a blank check. You don't know what your service is going to entail. You can't control the needs of the army, but you're willing to step into whatever need that is. And so for anyone listening, it doesn't matter where you did, where you went, how long you served. If you served, you served and you deserve to be honored and included in that veteran community. So you raised um, your right hand, whereas we're part of such a small population. I think it's like 1%. We raised our hands and stood up and went. So yeah, yeah. no matter how your career ended, you're still a veteran. You still served. You did something that most people didn't have the guts or the ability to do. Yeah. I always love it when I hear, well, that's the one regret I had. I never got the chance to serve. And it's like, oh, you had the chance. You chose to not do it. Absolutely. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I just am really grateful for women like you stepping up and running organizations like the Women Veterans of San Antonio and also partnering with other organizations like the Pink Berets to really maximize your reach and your impact. Thank you for 25 years. It's, I think you said seven months and some of the days. Like, thank you so much for that dedication to this country and for continuing to serve women and, and helping us feel whole and and be a part of a community it's just really really incredible so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all that you're doing and thank you thank you for your service and what you're doing to get the word out about women veterans i think that's amazing too if you enjoyed the show please be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode rate and review this podcast and share with your friends until next time be seen be heard be known amplify women veterans.